So now we're going to Z-Remesh. So Z-Remesher, dynamic, another dynamic auto read topology function inside of ZBrush. This one giving you ordered topology. Let's turn on our polyframes, hitting Shift F. Um, and I will leave perspective off for now, just in case I need to do any sweeping passes across here. Um, so zero mesher, for those of you who haven't used it, um, simply put, if I click on the zero mesher button, it's going to go through, and it's going to retopologize my mesh, right? And it's going to give me nice, clean, quadded topology. That's the basic. Um, the very basic explanation for zero measure, right? But let's step back because we have a little bit more control than just clicking that button. We can choose a polygon count. This is measured in the thousands. By default, it's at five. Um, I probably want to stick to that. For something like this, I might even want to go see if I can go lower. Um, the, how do you determine what the correct poly count is for what you're doing for a game? Well, if you're in production, you're going to have guidelines and they're going to tell you um, you know you can't exceed this for this character you can't exceed this poly count for this character and that'll determine that if it's something you're working on for your own and you're like well I'm not sure what this character should be well look at about it this way you can handily handle um, you know, you're, you're going to shoot for how many polys you can have on the screen right so you're that's going to that's going to dictate it's all about performance so I I personally just look at it this way. Um, how low can I get? How low can I get without sacrificing too much of my silhouette? All right? So I want to be able to see as much of the silhouette as possible, but some of the subtlety will be lost when I go really, go really low, because this is what we're going to bring into uh, Maya today to uh, at a low resolution with maps applied to it. So I'm going to start with the default 5, and then I'll see if I can move, move lower later on. Um, so that's one way in which you can control the poly count. You also have half, same, and double. And these three buttons will give you half the current poly count, or the same, or double the current poly count. Now, with this button on, the adaptive algorithm, or the adaptive density algorithm, that um, sort of gives the zero measure algorithm some leeway in what you're telling it to do. So I may say, hey, I want this to be 5,000 polys. The adaptive density algorithm is going to say, oh, well, you know what? I don't think that sounds good. You might need 10,000 polys. Right, so these aren't hard marching orders when this is on. Um, they're more suggestions. And even with this off, these will never be exact. Like you'll never get exactly 5,000 polys. Should we merge the head and body of a creature under the same mesh like yours? Mine are also separate subtools. I would keep, Simon, I would keep uh, everything together as one mesh with the exception of uh, the eyes and any uh, internal mouth structures. I would keep everything as one mesh. It's going to make things. It's going to make your world <laughs> a much a much easier place to live in when you're when you're when you bring that into Maya. Um, beyond that, we do have some tuning ability in adaptive density strength. So if I were to bring this value down, the adaptive algorithm would have less say so in how it. Uh, and, and how much decision making it can make during the, the, the remeshing process. We can also use curves, which I'll be applying to here. And then we can also control density by polypaint. So the way that the polypaint density works is a value of two is twice the density of everything else that's not painted, right? And there's a color assignment. If you look here, you can see that there's a, this pink color now here. That's zero mesher is going to look at that color for wherever it's painted on here, and it's going to make that twice as dense as anywhere else. I do retopologize by hand, and I'll be retopologizing my hand inside of Maya using planar retopology. And uh, I want to go through some of the the new modeling tools 
the modeling toolkit inside of 2015 and go through that process with you on on characters that we're working on. Actually, our next character will be will be going through and and be doing hand retopology. For the sake of time, you would use this workflow in production. It depends how you know how much are, how much screen time are we going to see on this character, right? How far are we going to see it from? How because it's so frustrating to actually go in by hand. You know what? It can be, it can be, but retopo, depending on your character, I mean, if you have a really complex character, like the final character that we're going to do in this, in this class, it might take us a day or two to, to retop, retopause it. And it might take us longer, depending on how complex we, we make the characters. Because um, it's just the nature of what it is. But hand retopology is always superior than is more superior than auto retopology like something you would do inside of 3d code or something inside of zbrush um, unless you have full control like you have with like say i don't know the topology brush or uh, using zsphere retopology yes exactly manuel you have complete control inside of something like maya so i didn't have my object filled with poly paint so automatically it filled it with that color um, I am just going to go ahead and turn on RGB, actually. Let's go color, fill object. Let's set the color density to 2. And typically, I want, um, I want the front of the head, including the mouth, to be twice as dense, as well as the hands. Any area of where that will receive more transformations or will have more, will have exercise more motion and will hold more detail or will need require more detail I want those areas to have um, a greater density so I'm going to paint that in let's go to the standard brush turn off the add turn on RGB and let's drop that in and let's go broader strokes And I think for his waddle, I want to keep that relatively light. So I'll go back through and do that in a second. Let's get his foots. Hitting the C key to sample white color. Now, you have to realize that when you do this, um, you're telling ZBrush to target. This is the way the, the order of, uh, just sort of the order of operations, the way that the ZBrush algorithm works. You're telling it to produce a 5,000 poly mesh, and then that's over the whole thing, right? 5,000 polys for the whole thing. Then you're going, okay, but do these areas twice as dense? So you're going to hit probably about 10,000 polys, even with like the adaptive algorithm off, at least. All right, now let's go ahead and zero mesh. Let's check out the result. Shift F, there we go, right? So we have a bit more density in this area. Um, one thing I'm gonna be looking for is spirals. What I'm really happy with um, in the new version of zero mesher is that we have reduced spiraling in the mesh. And what spiraling is, um, in case you know, it's when the poly flow spirals down a limb rather than moving straight across like stacked cylinders, right? Spiraling can cause issues when, uh, when you're rigging and you're trying to deform that area. It just doesn't, it doesn't deform well. All right, so now let's take a look at the face and see what it gave me straight out of, out of just with no curves. The mouth, I'm pretty happy with. Like that, I can work with. If I were to have to rig this, I can work with that. The eyes, however, if I wanted anything to happen in those eyes, like I wanted to blink, I wanted anything where there was some sort of like deformation in the eyes, that's not going to work. So I'm going to try to create the flow that I need inside of the eyes. And I'm going to use the curves to do that with. So I'm going to use the zero mesher guide brush. BZR, 
And in case you've never used curves before, the way that curves work is you draw out a line and you have these little hash marks. The distance and the number of these hash marks is determined upon your brush size. So if I increase my brush size, my draw size, I'll have fewer hash marks. Now, more of these hash marks doesn't mean that it's going to perform any better. Um, because what happens is, especially like when you're using something like the topology brush, when you have these curves, you want them to connect when you cross over. right? When you're dealing with like really high resolution curves um, across a large area, um, you might not get the snap that you want and the lower curve will snap a little bit easier and it's a little bit easier to control. So basic curve controls or curve drawing controls, draw to curve, draw across a curve, when you get a connection point like that, you can hold down Alt and delete a curve if you want to continue to draw off a curve, you can go down here and grab any one of these circles and just continue to draw off of it. To clear curves, just tap on the surface and it'll clear all your curves. All right, so I want my topology to flow around the eye. And Usually one curve for this doesn't, doesn't do it. Now, because the reason why I say that is you can go, well, you can increase the curve strength slider, which is giving it harder marching orders to obey your curves. But I found that when you move either one of these out from their default positions, inevitably you get poorer results. It doesn't give you better results. So I'm going to go doubly around. And just to give you guys a heads up, we might run about 30 minutes over the two hour mark. Um, two usually does it. So I'm just going to look at the head right now. I'm going to go ahead and Z remesh. And I'm going to see what I get. I'm not even looking at other parts of the mesh right now. I'll go do a mesh check at the very end. Let's hit Shift F. It's closer, but it's not really giving me what I want still. So what are my options? Well, I can draw on another curve, um, which I don't want to add more curves here. But so what I'm going to do instead is sometimes just smoothing the mesh down a little bit will give you more of what you want, right? So I'm going to smooth this down. I don't want to smooth it down so far that it moves super far from my original position, but I just want to smooth it down a little bit. And let's go ahead and zero mesh again. You know, that's better. I could probably do something with this, but I'm still not getting what I want. Um, I, do have, I do have an option I could use, which I think I might use. Um, let's try one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and try one last thing here. And then if, if Zero Mesher won't do it for us, um, sometimes local retopology will with the topology brush. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. And I will try increasing the curve strength just slightly. So always makes me nervous moving that out. And I will try adding one more set of curves around this going ZBrush really, really, really give me these concentric circles. go. Oh, thanks, Claude. Well, there's, okay, it's still giving me the same result, right? This is, this is, I, I, I can't, if I were actually, I want to show you guys so that you guys can actually use this if you wanted to work the eyes. And this is always the tricky spot. Thank you so much, Claude. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> Um, this is always the tricky spot, right? The eyes. 
uh, or any area that has that circular movement. Large stuff like the mouth usually is an issue. Um, I'm not so concerned about the nostrils. I don't think I'll be deforming those. I just really want that in my normal map. Um, but the eyes are something, you know, especially like in PS4 games and Xbox One games, you get that kind of, you know, even in like some NPCs, you get that, that, that movement. You know, you, you get a blink. You know, you get, you get some deformation in there. You know, it's, uh, and I mean, I'm hoping that um, within like the next 10 years, we'll be playing games like you saw in Her. Um, I don't think it's too far off. So we'll really want our meshes to perform well. But anyways, right now, we still want this to perform well. So I have, let's take a look at the rest of my mesh first and make sure that we have no holes. That's the main thing that I'm looking for. And then let's turn on our polygroups and let's look for any major issues. That star could be an issue. I don't know. No, I think that's going to be fine. That's moving into this. That should be fine. And what I'm looking for, uh, that might be a little bit of a tricky snafu. So when I come across this area, what I'm looking for is I want cylinders around the limbs, right? So it's like stacked cylinders all the way around. Would you or have you used a mixed workflow and production of Zero Mesh and Maya Cleanup? Yes, I have. And um, that's not a problem either. But I'm trying to keep within ZBrush just for this, for this exercise because, you know, if you can, why not, you know? So um, let's look at this area. Does it take more time? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I find sometimes meshes that I create instead of ZBrush or 3D Coat, it's easier to edit within the program. Yeah, of course, it'd be great. That's the ideal. You want to do everything in one piece of software. All right, so this area I want to heal. So I'm going to step back one more time, and this is going to be my last Z mesh. Smooth out that area. Let's Z mesh again, and then let's go ahead and deal with those eyes. There we go. That's much better. I get nice cylindrical movement with the exception of these skin flaps, and I like these being isolated, but my poly count is so high. So what I'm going to do is let's reduce the poly count down to like one here. Let's go 0.5, see what we get. I just realized it was at 20,000 points. I want to get like down towards like five to 10. There we go. There's 6,000 polys. 